Now the title of this video says what I've learned after creating 1000 renders. In fact, I've created way more than that. I've been studying visual arts for over 20 years. I started with Japanese calligraphy, which is exceptionally uh, sensitive to composition and negative space, which gave me, I think, the edge that I have right now for creating renders. But in addition to this, I was doing photography for over eight years and then 3D for more than five now. So the combined experience uh, is quite substantial and I really wanted to give you some kind of an insight that hopefully is going to help you on your path. The first tip I can give you is less is more, right? I see this all the time, you know, overcomplicated renders, overcomplicated lighting, overcomplicated details, overcomplicated materials, etc., right? Keep it simple, because when you keep it simple, you can build upon it. When I taught photography before, I used to tell my students that, you know, when you work with, for example, flash photography, you should start with one light, because when you can control one light, you can learn how to control two. But when you add two lights at the same time to the scene, it's just too much conflict. And if you don't know what the light is doing, you're going to be confused. Start simple. Start with one light. Start with one model. Start with simple background. Start start with simple mats. You know, don't add, I don't know, 18 mats to your model. It's just going to look like a parrot. Add one or two. So add the main mat and then break it, right? Then add the third one as kind of like, you know, accents on your model here and there. Look at works of really, really good artists and you will see how masterfully they can actually use colors and placement of materials, etc. Now, this is not a tutorial on composition because it's a whole different, you know, subject. And we actually have a fantastic course on this called Rendering University. Now, I don't give a shit if you're going to buy it or not. But if you really care about composition and you really care about getting better at rendering, this is probably the best um, course out there for you to teach you that because I'm going really deep on the subject. It's probably like seven or eight hours long and it's just pure composition, lighting and all that, right? You can grab it on our website. The link is in the description. Another thing that's really important when you're creating renders, you need to have a clear subject of what you're shooting, right? Even if you have two or three or four models in your render, make sure that there is a clear focus on your picture and then sort of the other models, you know, whether they duplicate or something else, they sort of a uh, background, you know, kind of supporting, like supporting actors in the movie, right? You get the main actors you got supporting actors right so elements in a, in a in a picture should be you know the main elements the main actors and supporting actors and if the supporting actors overtake uh, the you know uh, they are more important than the the main actors you're losing the audience you, you're not really conveying the message you wanted to convey so in, uh, in other words when you're creating a render everything should be intentional nothing should be accidental if you know, you're creating a good work, a great work, and it's accidental, you're not a pro, you're just lucky. Now, a professional is going to deliver uh, continuously consistent results. That's what it means to be a pro, okay? You need consistent results on a higher level, not one or two images when you're locked out. Do you see what I mean? So in order to learn, you know, how to run, you need to learn how to walk. So start simple. And honestly, simple scenes are the best because they're very clean. They're very impactful. They sell really what you want to tell. If you look at my renders, most of them have very simple background. They are very clean. You know, that's also my style. I'm not saying that's what you need to do. But it's a good place to start because when you uh, get to more complex scenes, like for example, this one, you're going to get lost because there's a lot of elements, there's a lot of lights, there's a lot of shadows, there's a lot of colors, and um, you're going to be confused and you're going to mess it up. So start simple, learn all the rules, and then move on, okay? Second thing is probably the most important thing that you're ever going to learn, and you will have to learn about composition and framing, and that's visual weight and negative space and no one is talking about it especially about negative space but it's so important i've learned a great deal about negative space when i was studying japanese calligraphy and i had a fantastic teacher and one day he told me something so profound that it changed completely the way i think about composition now you need to understand one thing about japanese calligraphy that when you write you can't hesitate and you can't make corrections because both of them are going to be visible so you're going to write from your soul now, when you write, you see a blank paper and you need to feel and see your writing on that paper before you start. So you write completely from your soul without thinking. 
So composition in calligraphy for me is, I think, the highest level of difficulty in terms of composition in art. It's extremely difficult and very complex. And it takes decades, not years, decades to even understand, let alone master. My teacher was 75 or 76 and he said that, you know, he starts understanding calligraphy. Just let it fucking sink in. He was studying for 50 fucking years. Insanity. And one day we were uh, at the exhibition in Ginza in Tokyo and we were looking at the work together and I asked him, so tell me, how do you actually feel the composition? How do you understand the composition? How do you look at work and read the composition? And he told me one thing that blew my fucking mind. He said, don't look at the characters. Look at the white space. And then it hit me. It's all about negative space. And ever since when I composed something, I don't look at the models. I look at the negative space. I look at the background. I look at the shape of the background. If the shape of the background is actually balanced, that's when my work is going to be balanced. Now, to arrive to this one, I don't want to sound cocky, okay? But to arrive to this kind of a level of understanding of negative space, you're going to have to fucking study a lot, right? Try to understand it from this angle. So, look at negative space, which is the space that surrounds the model. So, if you look at this ship now, right? All this space around the model here, all of this, right? This is all negative space, okay? All of that. And if this feels balanced, then the image is going to be balanced. And the way you balance negative space is with visual anchors. So basically elements that pull visual weight. So when you look at an image and you draw into some element, that's going to be visual weight of that element pulling you in. Like, for example, this human here, right, has a massive visual weight for two reasons, actually three reasons. One of them is because it's a human. We're always going to be drawn to human figures. Two is very contrasty because it's very dark and very bright. And three is looking in a direction of the ship. So when you look at this human, and it's going to be probably one of the first things you're going to see in the image because we're drawn to human figures. You will look at him and then you think, where the fuck is he looking at? And you're going to look at the vessel. And now, because his head is slightly above the vessel, he's looking across the vessel here along this, you know, very curvy line. So it's going to send you all over the vessel to the back and then back to the human. And then eventually you're going to notice the text because it's a little bit faint, but it's a text. We're also drawn to text. So texts also have quite massive visual weight. But then when you look at the vessel itself, right, you will notice that there are a lot of uh, contrasty elements. Like, for example, here, uh, then you got it here, then you have here, here, and here, right? And, of course, at the back. So you got kind of islands of visual weight between which you're going to be dancing, right? And this is exactly why most of these ship areas are clean and there's no additional detail. So you can glide from area of detail to area of detail and admire the whole image. Now, the whole idea of a good image is to keep you circling in that image as long as possible between interesting visual anchors. So you've been pulled between visual weight uh, sort of areas like islands from two, and you need this sort of beautiful, um, you know, empty spaces between them in order to for your eyes to relax and glide from two. Do you understand? So you got negative space uh, that's built around the models and you got negative space on the models as well because that's also a negative space just it's on the model okay it's like a second level of negative space so if you think this way you'll understand it. now let me give you a practical example okay this image has three issues you're probably not going to notice them but if you do well done one of them is here another one is here and the third one is this triangle here it's breaking the the flow of the wing. You see that? The, the wing is beautifully flowing like this. And you want to continue all the way here, but you get distracted in this area. It doesn't flow well with the whole design of the ship, which is very curvy. The same here. The spokes um, underneath is kind of like a uh, you know dark belly of the ship. And it breaks this beautiful continuity of this line. And this one, the same, is just a reflection and it shouldn't be so prominent. So now let me show you the same image, but fixed, right? I'm just gonna turn it on now and look how calm it looks, 
right? I also added some decals here and there, but uh, do you see the difference? How clean this now is, right? With all these small elements. So tiny elements like this can ruin your composition. And the more of these elements you see, the better your, the better your understanding of composition becomes. So study really good art. Don't study shit art. This is the problem with AI. People say, oh, AI is going to take over. Fucking, you know, bullshit. There's an interesting video on the internet where um, it's been discussed that AI is just basically spitting very similar images, very similar type of images, right? So basically garbage in, garbage out. There's so much garbage on the internet. Only, I don't know, one or maybe 2% of images are actually good. The rest is shit. So AI is basically learning on shit images on Facebook, Instagram, or, you know, whatever. Because people post crap. They have no idea how to frame pictures, how to frame, you know, how to, how to create good imagery. And it's only a handful of people who can do that well. So AI is basically, you know, most of the AI spits from Midjourney need a lot of work. The composition is off, the detailing is off. It's just all shit, right? So, you know, in a nutshell, I wouldn't worry about AI too much. By the way, hope you understand this because visual weight and negative space are the most important things to master if you really want to get good at composition and lighting. And it goes to everything. Modeling, detailing, you know, texturing, it applies the same principles because it's all about negative space and it's all about visual weight. So keep studying your imagery and you're going to get better and better and better. But remember, study good art. Don't study shit art because it's much easier to learn good shit from scratch than unlearn bad habits. This is really difficult to do, which is exactly why we created Jumpstart Calls for you guys, for beginners, to teach you from scratch, you know, all the good habits, the, you know, how to set the UI, how to model, how to detail, how to texture, how to render. And you can get this course for free. You know, we got almost 100,000 students right now enrolled. It's very popular. So go ahead and get it if you're new to Blender. And, and I have a few tips on composition and, and rendering. So, you know, uh, you can learn uh, this and that. But if you're really serious about studying, I would highly recommend rendering university course, which is also on our website. Now, that was a really long bit on visual weight and, and the negative space. But honestly, guys, the most important thing that you ever learn, if you really want to get good at framing, composition, and even modeling and design, because the same principles apply in every single of these uh, of these disciplines, okay? So now let's move on to tip number three, and that's gonna be keep it consistent. So when you create a portfolio, I often see this, you know, you got fucking chairs, blenders, fucking sci-fi guns, you know, I don't know, blonde hair, tits, fucking all over the place. Just keep it consistent because when you niche down and when you find something that you really like, and it's really crucial, find something that you like, keep your imagery consistent, not just in style, but also in type. If you go to my uh, portfolio, it's going to be sci-fi, hard surface. I don't do anything else. I, you're not going to see any fucking, you know, park benches. It's just sci-fi, right? So keep it consistent. It's really important because if you were applying for a job, think about it. And someone is asking you, okay, so what can you do? I said, well, I can do a bit of typing. I can do a bit of emailing. I can do a bit of marketing. I can do a bit of car washing. So what the fuck are you? You're nothing. You're just a jack of all shit. Focus down and keep it consistent. And this will teach you how to be consistent with your renders. And that will teach you something very, very important, which is tip number, number four. And that's building your own style. Because when you're all over the place, when you're trying to copy this guy and trying to copy this guy and trying to copy that guy, you're not going to be yourself. You're going to be someone else. You need to be yourself. Now, to become yourself, to have your own style, granted, it takes a lot of time, but you need to strive for it. You need to, you need to go for it. You need to keep building these abilities on the way. So when you're being distracted by other people, you can get inspired but don't get overwritten. Do you see what I mean? Try to flesh out your own style. And honestly, if you follow your heart, right? If you follow what you really want to do, it's going to come out. So don't try to be someone else. Just be you. And it's going to fucking work. Another thing that's important, do not try to be popular. Because if you're popular, you're not yourself. Unless you're popular for a specific reason. Because, you know, you are actually genuinely original. That's fine. But if your images get likes on Instagram because you repeated what other person is doing, 
you're not really fucking improving, you're just actually regressing, okay? So don't try to be popular, try to be you. And if you really believe in what you can do and in your own style and in your own abilities and in the direction you're going, there will be people who will follow you because they will like your shit, right? Because it's going to speak to them. Do you see what I mean? The reason why when I was younger, you know, I was listening to Pink Floyd, for example, or, you know, Led Zeppelin, whatever, because it spoke to me. The music was actually, you know, aligned with what I, what I liked. Now I'm listening to Soy Ambient or fucking, you know, Trance, whatever, because it speaks, do you see what I mean? It just, you need to be connected to what you're doing. You cannot just repeat other people and because you want to be popular. Just do what feels right. It's really simple, but most people don't do that. They ask me, I get these questions all the time. What should I model? Fuck, I don't know. What do you want to model? Just model what you want to model. Because when you do something that you like, you're going to be good at it eventually. Because when you repeat and repeat and repeat, you're going to get better and better and better. And if you're doing something you don't like, you'll give up. Right? So do something you fucking like. And then you're going to get better and better and better. It's just simple. So forget the fucking likes, forget the fucking instant gratification, forget this millennial bullshit fucking Gen Z rubbish, and just do it the right way, okay? Be you. Sort it. And now the last tip. Don't get cocky, and keep your head down and keep studying. Alright? The best people out there never stop, and that's why they're the best. So if you are going to achieve something, don't fucking look back. Just keep moving, okay? Achievements are the past. You are chasing the goal in the future. So keep studying, keep improving, and you will see something very interesting that could actually slightly affect you. But when you look at it from a right perspective, it won't. And what I mean by that is that when I create a render, right, and I publish it on my art station, whatever, there is a time, you know, a month, two months, maybe later on, when I suddenly don't like that render. And the reason why I don't like it is because I improved and I saw things I didn't see before. Or I didn't see on the day when I created it. Because you can miss stuff. Like, for example, you know, in this case, you see it on the screen, right? I missed this bit when I was, you know, first time rendering it. I didn't see them. But when I brought them to Photoshop, I was like, oh, shit, that looks like garbage. I need to fix that stuff, right? Occasionally, you know, even an angle, change of an angle is, is quite important. So... Sometimes when I render something from a specific angle, I adjust materials, I adjust the lighting, I, well, lighting obviously, but materials. Let's say a material is a bit too bright, I'm going to dump it down and make it a bit more dark. So I don't change the lighting because I like the lighting, I change the mats. Okay, I change the background, you know. But sometimes you don't see things, you miss them, and you, you produce a render, you think it's good, and a week later it's like, what the fuck is this shit, right? So it doesn't mean that you, you're shit, it actually means you improved. So switch your thinking, you know, the, the, the way you um, sort of perceive yourself in this light, right? From, you know, being, oh shit, I suck. So, oh fuck, I improved. Do you see what I mean? It's just, you know, it's a bit of a different approach. Again, don't get cocky because remember this, right? There is no such thing as complete mastery. It just doesn't exist. doesn't matter how fucking good you are. You're going to be always improving, right? And the funny thing is that the more you know, the less you know. And it's actually true. Because the more you know, the wider are your, your horizons, the, the, the wider is your actually perspective on things, the higher, you know, the higher you sit and, and you can see more. And the more you can see, the more you're fucking amazed on how much you don't know, okay? I'm learning every day. Every day, every single render, every single image, I'm actually still studying, right? And improving and perfecting. And sometimes, you know, even when you see other people's work, you get inspired. It was like, oh shit, that's actually an interesting way of thinking. And you try to adapt it to your own style. Yeah. So anyway, hope it helps you out, guys. Like I said, if you're new to Blender and you want to learn, grab our Jumpstart course. But if you're really serious about rendering and imagery, get Rendering University because this shit is good. You're not going to regret it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.